we are going to be going over some of the worst games that we've played this year because not everything always comes off perfectly. So, yeah, unfortunately, it has been a great year for the most part, but uh, unfortunately, some things just, yeah, don't come out the way you want them to. Either you play them and they're not living up to your hype or you read the reviews and they just aren't doing great, but for whatever reason, they didn't come out great. You want to uh, go into the news? Oh, we can go into the news. We got some good news and we got some bad news today. Uh, we'll start with some good news. Sound good? I got three yeah. pieces of news today. Antoine knows one of them. Uh, the other two, he might not. Okay, so first of all, we have... So Razer and Qualcomm are going to be building their own gaming peripheral. It's uh, going to be a portable gaming device. It's going to be running on Snapdragon, which is Qualcomm's uh, chip base, I guess. And it's designed that it's designed for two things. So this is designed specifically to play Android games, but it's also designed for streaming. So some people are saying that this might actually be it, it, it on the surface. It's not a competitor for the Steam Deck because it's not going to be able to play PC games in the way the Steam Deck is able to do. However, if streaming does become popular, especially with things like xCloud or, or NVIDIA or, uh, you know, uh, St uh, Stadia, then this, you know, might be a much cheaper alternative to the Steam Deck uh, if you're looking for something that's streaming because you're still going to get those same games at relatively the same quality as long as you have a decent internet connection. So this is something that may be keeping an eye on. But uh, again, it's mostly designed for streaming and Android games, which... Quite frankly, an Android phone can do. So if you have uh, those things that you can clip onto the sides, are you getting any real advantage of it, out of it? I don't really know. So what's your guys' opinion on this? Do you think this is a a wise product design, or do you think it's kind of a weird niche thing that isn't really necessary? It really depends on the price, I would say. Yeah, they haven't released a price yet, so. Uh, but people have been it speculating. If it's cheap, why not? But otherwise, yeah. I mean, you have you already have your mobile phone, so why do, would you need a mobile console for the Android games? Yeah, I don't know. If you yeah for the Android games, I mean, I guess not every phone is the best gaming phone in the world. Uh, for example, my phone's it's decent. It can run stuff pretty well, but I mean, it gets hot after a while. Uh, it can heat up pretty quickly. The battery life's not too too bad. Um, but I guess this is the difference here is that this is specifically designed for gaming as opposed to a mobile device, which is designed for multiple functionality. So I guess you can be a little more efficient about it, go a little bit harder into the graphics, and then probably design a battery that's more designed for uh, extended use as opposed to uh, being idle most of the time. You know, like a phone, like a phone can last for over 24 hours, but you're not using it for... You know, most people aren't using it for more than 15 minutes, half an hour at a time. You know, you pull it out, you look at it, you browse some news, you get off the bus, you put it in your pocket. Uh, this, I guess, is designed for longer play sessions. So I think there is a, a, a place for it. But again, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I think if you can just get the good clips to put on the side, you've effectively already, you already have this. It already exists. So also, this doesn't look like it would fit in your pocket very well. Nope. <laughs> what about you, Phil? What do you think? Would you be oversaturated market? I don't think there's particularly. I think it'd be one of those things that comes and goes. Yeah. So that's the first piece of news. The second piece of news, which is still good news, I guess. I don't know. It depends on your opinion. Uh, Spartacus, which is the new PlayStation Game Pass competitor that is going to be coming out. It's not quite clear what it is, uh, but from initial looks, it appears that there's going to be three different tiers. The So the first tier is basically just what PlayStation Plus is now. Second tier is basically 
what PlayStation Plus is now, plus a library, an instant library of games that you would have access to. And then the t third tier would basically be a combination of PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now, where you get all the stuff from PlayStation Plus, but you also get game streaming of pretty much mostly older Sony games. So, you know, PS1, PS2 era. PS3, people are a little bit skeptical on just because the PS3 was notoriously bizarre in its design and it's just really hard to emulate as a result. Uh, but yeah, so this is one of the things Korean uh, has asked me this question before. Uh, but would you guys be interested in some sort of Game Pass like uh, choice where you can subscribe and get access to all these games for the length of your subscription? Not for myself. I don't even do PS uh, Plus right now because I'm not playing PlayStation enough for that. You know, when it's our age and you don't play 12 hours a day, there's no point. If I was younger and I had, you know, this is the only thing I was doing. Maybe yeah, uh, that would be interesting. But right now, it's uh, I'd rather go and have my Steam sales on PC. Mm. <laughs> so, what about you, Phil? Plus, I you... guess it's you know, yeah, okay. sub subscription based. I guess it's subscription based, and yeah, it'll be. I guess on the I guess tier two is going to be kind of like Game Pass, where. There's a library of games and you can download them. And then tier three, I think, is supposed to be streaming, which will be like xCloud. Extended demos, game streaming, and backwards compatibility. Yeah. It could be fun if you have time to spend on it on the PlayStation, yeah. Well, uh, like, play, like PS Now is on PC. Yeah. So this might but, be on PC. I don't know. Again, too many backlog in the Steam library. So exactly. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm kind of like. Ah, I don't know. I like buying my games. I don't, I don't know if I want to do this subscription thing. What about you, Phil? I was checking the prices. They reckon that the basic level is going to be around about twenty dollars, which is going to mean you're probably going to want at least a second level. So I don't. Know, I think it's too rich for my blood. Again, like my play. My playtime is not consistent enough in a month that I would be willing to spend $30 on a subscription pack that maybe some months I would never use. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It would be more aimed at uh, students, but students, do they really have so much, that much money to spend? $20 or, a month? That's okay. what, uh, well, I, no, that's okay. We played one. That's for the lowest too. level though. You're going to need the second level, aren't you, really, to get the games, to have the Game Pass style the lowest level is twenty dollars. Isn't isn't PlayStation and isn't PS Plus only fifteen? Right. It says PlayStation currently PlayStation Now and PlayStation Plus are ten dollars a month. The price will likely be somewhere within the range of those combined. Well, that would be so, for Tier Three though, because Tier One is basically just Plus what it is now. The Tier Three would be Tier Three is the one that combines them. Oh, maybe. So it could be ranging anywhere mm. between ten to twenty dollars. Which, if you're doing the ten dollar thing, then there's no difference to what you're doing now. So, mm. no change. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't. Which I don't means know. I think it'd be more expensive than that, wouldn't you? Otherwise, everybody would get it. It just, it just wouldn't make sense not to get it. What do you mean the the, the t third tier? Oh, they phase out. Will they phase out PlayStation Plus then? PlayStation. Yeah, I think PS the idea Plus is that I think the idea is that they're replace yeah exactly they're 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 going to be replacing mm -hmm. PS Now and PS Plus and combining them into one service, but the service is going to be tiered, so mm -hmm. you can choose for basic level, mid level, or high level. Mm. Yeah, so they're, they're I mean, just I don't, I've not paid for, I've not paid for PlayStation Plus for like since I was playing Outriders. When was that? Like about seven months ago. Yeah. Oh, you don't need it for uh, multi. Your wife doesn't need it for Ghost of Tsushima multiplayer. She has it. She has PS Plus. She has a Taiwanese account. Oh, okay. Well, then somebody has PS Plus. <laughs> hmm. But I mean, I can't get on the PlayStation, so it's irrelevant. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I have PS Plus, but I was like, really? You don't have PS Plus? What? Oh, but yeah, yeah. I don't have two accounts. I don't have an American account and a and a Taiwanese account. I only have a Taiwanese account. So. I thought you had two. Uh, I no. put you twice on my friends list. Yeah, but I don't have PS Plus on the on the American account. Oh, okay. So you mean you've got the two accounts, but you only have it paid for them. Yeah, yeah. I have two accounts, but the American account I don't have PS Plus on it. 
Because why would I need? Because I mean, the the biggest benefit I arguably would be sales, or the free games. And the free games are going to be both are are ninety five percent of the time the same on the U.S. as they are are in Taiwan. So I could double dip and get a U.S. version and a Taiwanese version of the same game. And then for sales, typically the same games are on sale. So why why do I need two accounts? Occasionally there are I differences. Know, so yeah, Zoe always used to go on, but when I used to have, when I do, sometimes I'll have my UK account. Now I've got a Taiwanese account as well, so because I can go to the shop much easier and get the card. But when I used to have the UK one and pay for it, she would what go through all the sales on the Taiwanese yeah. store, and then she would switch to my account, and she would go through all the sales on my account, and then she'd be like, "Oh, why is Assassin's Creed or Grand Theft Auto cheaper on yours than mine?" Yeah, sometimes, so sometimes there's some differences. Things. Yeah, some things uh, are different. Like for example. Uh, in Taiwan, for me, it's 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 mostly the language thing. So, like in Taiwan, for example, Valkyria Chronicles, they don't have the English version of Valkyria Chronicles here. They only have the Chinese version. Uh, whereas on the U.S. store, I can get it, you know, the English version. Usually, games will release with a Chinese Korean version and a Japanese English version, or they'll release a version here that has Japanese Korean. Chinese and English all in one version. Uh, so they'll do that quite a bit, but occasionally you get games that are not, you, you can't get the English version of games here. And that's what I mostly use my American account for are those games. Uh, but yeah, other than that, the first time with my outriders, I bought outriders from the store and they told me it was the English version and obviously I can't read it. And I got back and there was no English version. That, so I ended up selling it secondhand to get most of the money back. So then I just bought it online. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it was, a. Uh, there was a mistake one time where was it uh, one of the Tomb Raiders was on sale and and I bought it and I ended up I, I I remember thinking it was supposed to be the English version when I bought it and then when I went to play it it was like nope this is Korean and I'm like why is this Korean <laughs> this is Korean and Chinese um so and then I looked at the store and there was no English version so I was like well why it's so weird but whatever <laughs> I remember I bought it on sale so uh, so that's the first piece of news. Second piece of news you may have heard of. Uh, so the vice president of PSN uh, has been busted for hiring the services of a 15-year-old boy. Uh, so apparently what happened was there is a vigilante group. I don't remember what they're called exactly, but they basically catfish pedophiles is, is their M.O., and so what they did was they went and posed as a 15-year-old boy and got in contact with a uh, man. And they posted, and it was posted by a YouTuber, or, or uh, I think it was a YouTuber, or like some Twitter guy. And it was, it was weird that this guy was posting it because when he was the one posting it, I guess people say that he's, he's uh, the account is kind of one of those sensationalist kind of uh you know accounts that just does things for attention so when it first came out some people were thinking oh this is fake this isn't real uh but anyway the video you know they, they had the conversation which is pretty graphic and then in the video somebody goes up to this guy's house he's standing outside uh they approach him he basically is like what are you doing here and he starts to go into his house and then they start yelling at him through the door you know about how he's a pedophile and how he was trying to hook up with a 13 year old boy uh so again because of the video it was very hard to verify whether this person was in fact a pedophile so uh so <laughs> our beautiful pedo bear there and in fact he was wearing that exact shirt in the video uh but uh what happened was, so at first, because uh, I saw this, and I was looking around at the news, and there wasn't too much news on it. So I was thinking, oh, maybe this is fake. Well, the next day, there was an article on it, on, uh, you know, there was there were a few articles on it. And then the day after that, and Sony announced that this guy has been fired. So I am assuming that this is actually true, uh, and that this is it a real thing and, and not just some you know troll thing so yeah the fact that sony fired the guy within basically 24 hours of this going you know newsworthy uh is pretty big and and a lot of people when it first came out you know were making a lot of jokes particularly given the uh 
Activision and their uh, sexual harassment things going on, and Sony and Nintendo and Microsoft all made a stance, and then almost right after that, this guy, you know, with his uh, trying to elicit services. Uh, but then, yeah, Sony was on top of it, and they were like, nope, you're out, sorry, bye. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know, it was uh, fortunate news. <laughs> Antoine looks like he wants to say something. <laughs> No, no, I was just thinking it's a good way to end the, the show. Yeah, because Korean hates negative things. So this is a great way. We'll go out on the most perfectly negative thing you could possibly uh, talk about. 